nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. One Alpha. Roger, one Alpha. Godspeed, resilience. Vehicles pitching downrange. M1E propulsion is nominal. Power and telemetry nominal. Stage one, throttle down. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. Stage one, throttle up. One Bravo. Roger, one Bravo. Invec engine chill started. It's never not impressive, is it, watching space launches like that, watching those four astronauts launched Stage into orbit. Down. They're headed, of course, for the International Space Station. SpaceX and those four NASA astronauts launching the first regular crew mission, a first regular taxi service, if you will, and there you have it, the control room there, the socially distanced control room that we <laughs> see at Cape Canaveral. Let's get more from our Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Aerospace Defence and Airline yeah, Analyst. George Nico. Ferguson joins us on the line. George, you're watching this as well, and it, it always sort of catches me up by surprise, the, the, the emotional response from watching something like this. It, it really does still look like something of a miracle. What are the implications of this particular flight as being such a milestone? Yeah, so thanks for having me. Uh, it's a big milestone, I think, a, you know, a great day. Uh, for the U.S. putting uh, putting people back in orbit again uh, after the space shuttle program was shut down a bunch of years ago, and and for SpaceX and Elon Musk's efforts there, it's uh, you know NASA really trying to use a commercial um, you know a commercial paradigm here to put people into orbit. I think in the view that it can bring more efficiencies, maybe they get more for their more for their dollars, and we can do more work in space. So. You know, uh, having uh, uh, SpaceX and Boeing both build competing capsules uh, and compete for launches, I think, helps in the long run to bring that competition to space, which is which is going to open space up for all the opportunities that are there. So I think it's a great day, a great day for again competition as we uh, as we get into orbit again and really try to open up space uh, for commercial opportunities as well as research you know george when we see that shot that we just showed of the you know the, the team on the ground you know in you know watching over that making it happen it makes me it takes me back to that movie apollo 13 right uh, very dramatic and of yeah. course this one looks like a, a, a so far very good very good uh, takeoff and and probably going to be very successful. But I'm wondering, in terms of how big this can get, very different when you have private companies involved and they're, they're uh, depending on building up a market for this, right, compared to the government doing it, as it did for so many years. How big could this get and how profitable? Yes, I, I think it's hard for us to tell, right? I think in a lot of things, 
a lot of endeavors like space. Um, it's not always clear sort of all the commercial opportunities or things perhaps you can manufacture in orbit better than you can manufacture on the ground and things we may find in space we want more of. Um, but but again, I think it's you know space has been hard to reach for for uh, you know our existence because it's so expensive to get there. And so I think as you open it up, you find the opportunities. You find you may find some pharmaceuticals are made better up there, or some you know precision pieces up there. And so I think this is all about the unlocking. And again, the more you can drop the uh, the price of accessing space, the more you can enjoy the benefits of space. And so to me, I think a lot of that is still very, very unknown. I think to date we've done a lot, you know, with satellites up there and experiments, but I think a lot more to come, and it's just hard to say. George, you talk about opening up space and opening up a market that is already pretty competitive, right? So we're watching, of course, this milestone launch for NASA and SpaceX. At the same time, we have Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic as well as Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin. So who's really forging ahead and what does the competitive landscape look like from here? Well, so, I mean, I think there's, you can make a division of what some of the efforts are. You know, some of the efforts seem to be very touristic and they're sort of, you know, they're, they're high Earth orbit, or sorry, high Earth atmosphere just barely in space kind of tourism things. I, you know, we aren't focused as, as much on those. But I think as you get, um, as you actually get up into, you know, in, into orbit and into space, uh, you know, I think things have become more competitive, but they're not, they're not getting, getting, getting crazy yet. So I think, you know, Elon Musk has really brought this view that you can reuse pieces of your spacecraft mm -hmm. to drive down the cost. You can, you can use manufacturing processes, you know, uh, economies of scale to drive down costs, which I think, is, I think is big because I think the other big competitors against them are still some of the, the um, you know, the, the U.S. primes like Lockheed and Boeing, uh -huh. where the innovation isn't occurring as, as, as quickly and the, and the drive to push down costs isn't as occurring as quickly. So I think really Elon and Musk's SpaceX is the one that's really sort of, yeah. you know, sort of burrowing in there and changing the landscape. But the other ones are not as much right now. So, George, uh, I just want to ask you another quick question here. In terms of keeping the cost down, being competitive, expanding this landscape, is there, is there a technological uh, breakthrough that could be made that needs to be made to take it to another level? And, and of course, it does. It's just barely getting started. But still, what's, what's going to drive it now? Uh, you know, look, I think, again, I'm going to come back to it's going to be costs. Uh, there's always techno technological barriers to break uh, through, but uh, I think still, you know, you, sometimes you go for those technological barriers or you go for those leaps in, in technology changes and they get bitterly expensive. I think, what, what again, what NASA is telling you when they're, when they're contracting for space flight is they're looking for a way to, to drive down the cost on something they think is going to be very, very repetitive. So I don't think it's all – there's a technology breakthrough coming here. I think it's all about these companies driving down the cost of getting to orbit all the time so, so that we can do more there. And so I think it's really about those efficiencies that are being built in.